Okay, so initially we called this the Henley on foot, which we're still going to call it, but we're going to shorten it to 2Ks because Strava won't let us do the challenge at 2,112 metres. So it's just going to be a straight 2K time trial on foot running. So make sure that you've got your Strava set up and you've got your background app refresh enabled on your phone. It's all just really basic setup stuff for the app. So if you're already using it, then you should be good to go. So make sure you hit record, warm up properly, and then smash out your 2K time trial fast as you can. We want people to be doing it on the flat. Uni yeah, has good flat that. tracks. Obviously Westlakes is you a pretty can find decent. An oval even. Yeah, oval, just like yeah. keep doing laps. So long as your GPS gets that you're doing 2K. Raina and I are about to do this ourselves so we can show you how to do it and how to upload it. So like I did a bit of a threshold egg this morning. I don't know why I'm lightweight doing this with me. I'm not good at running. It's fine. Are also, you kidding? <laughs> we should be warmed up properly, right? Uh, right let's have a go. Ready, go. Maybe 100 meters down. Going strong. She's too fast for me. <laughs> yeah, the lighties. <laughs> Check out the view. Nice. Nearly over the thousand. We're on the home stretch oh now. God. <laughs> Yeah, rowing it, eh? <laughs> I feel like running is one of those things that, like, it sucks when you first start, but you get better at it very quickly. Yep, true. Yeah. Like, the first run's terrible. Second run, you do, you feel a lot better. And by the third one, yeah, you know, it's like a different person. It doesn't take long. You get much more comfortable. This stitch is killing me. <laughs> So nice, miss this place. I'll be faster on the water. <laughs> the elite runners get stitches. This is what happens Struggle when you're really town. dehydrated. <laughs> Prepare well, hydrate, eat lots. I know it's going to come back as soon as I start running. So we're just going to smash out this 500 meters. Yes. Let's just do it. Cracking pace. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Here it is, the 250. Up we go. <laughs> Lovely day. For a run down here. Nice flat water. Wish I was rowing, not running. Two Ks. Joe's on her way. Yeah, I have a real bad stitch now too. I will put some advice in on how to avoid stitches. Yeah. Warm down and stretch, right? Yeah, very important. So you've barely broken a sweat and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but right it doesn't matter how fast you do it yes. it just matters that you do it in case you don't know how fast you ran or you ran over the 2k distance you can find your speed in Strava like this okay so to win the bonus 10 points for your club you need to log your fastest 2k time in your category on the site head to our website on the program page and to your basic details your finish time and to help us verify pop the Strava link to your specific workout where you completed your 2k time trial it's important that you're part of the rowing essay group so we can verify your entry there's also frequently asked questions about the challenge and ways to earn extra points on the site too check it out and get involved the form to submit will be live on monday so leaders are going to be published on thursday night so that you can see how much faster you have to go to beat the reigning category winner so as a non-runner are all the challenges going to be running ones no, so we want to get you moving in all kinds of different ways. So we'll be doing a body weight exercise challenge, hill climbing and a range of other activities. And for the final challenge, it'll be determined by the people. So keep your brain switched on for a good challenge that you would like to see. So this challenge, the Henley on foot, starts on Monday and will go through to Sunday. So you'll have a chance to register your fastest 2K time trial up until Monday afternoon. We'll release the fastest time winners the following week. Get have moving, be active, have fun. Go team. Go team. It seems like a typically rowing thing. We don't run well. We don't prepare for runs well and we don't end up yeah. doing it properly. So Verena and I went for a run and I was just well out of my comfort zone and yeah. had to stop 1500 metres in because I just couldn't breathe. <laughs> 
Well, you don't, you don't often do them apart from the lightweights who obviously do a fair bit of running. So stitches are generally quite common in running. So what causes them is generally either you've, you, you haven't warmed up properly um, or sometimes you've eaten too close to, to the exercise as well. So obviously when you exercise, um, the blood flow goes from your, your internal organs. So say like your diaphragm, which is obviously responsible for your breathing and uh, it moves to the area that it's required. So if you're going for a run, obviously it moves to your legs. And, uh, and as, a, as a result, obviously all the blood flow that's moving from the diaphragm um, goes to your other, the other areas. So um, then you end up with this, this cramp or this stitch. How, how you stop it, obviously stop running to start with. So uh, because you want the blood flow to go back to the diaphragm. And uh, sometimes if you apply a little bit of pressure to the, um, the area of the diaphragm and just bend forward, it can obviously relieve it a little bit as well. Yeah, they're certainly not nice as no. you experience. Well, it's, they're different, very different muscle groups to what you're used to using as well. Yes, it's your legs, but you're using obviously your diaphragm in a different way and you're in a different position. You're not seated, you know, you're standing up. So, How much warm-up would you recommend if somebody was about to do like an all-out effort for a 2K? So generally a 5 to 10 minute warm-up before you go running. So, and warm up consisting of obviously something that's going to get your heart rate up. So a little bit of a jogging on the spot or some, uh, some star jumps or some high knees or bum kicks or something like that. Similar kind of things that you do before you get into a boat. Um, but obviously, you know, some dynamic movements as well. So some, some squats, some leg swings, all of those kind of things, because you're going to be using those, those muscle groups, but just, just to get your heart rate up and obviously get the, uh, the, the, the blood pumping. So, so would you recommend doing a bit of a jog like a k or so before doing your oh, before you do a max effort absolutely yeah for sure so you want to warm up into it a, a minimum of 1k i'd say of course depending on your uh, your ability how important is hydration when it comes to trying to negotiate stitches yep so not so much with a stitch but definitely a cramp so with regards to hydration um, so cramps, obviously, more so in, in muscle groups. So, you, you know, you're cramping your leg or you're cramping your arm if you're a swimmer or your foot or something like that if you're pushing off the wall consistently. Um, so by keeping that hydration level up, because obviously when you, even in the cooler weather like now, um, you'll lose, you'll, you'll sweat. So, um, you know, that's when something like an electrolyte, a hydrolyte or something like that might be, might be useful as well. So, or, you know, a banana or, a banana or something like that is quite, uh, quite helpful as well. So. All right. So to avoid the stitch warm up more than what yep. we did yesterday and yep. don't eat too close right yeah yeah because some people you know some people are more prone to them than others so uh, all right well, that's been really good um i'll i'm excited to see your physio sessions coming up thank you so much no dramas all right ciao so yeah